Hi there, thanks for joining me for this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform some basic printed circuit board design in KiCad. I'm going to try to hit the important points and avoid drilling down into too much detail. My board is going to be single layer because that's what I can fabricate here. The circuit I'm going to make is a discrete emitter follower amplifier, which is commonly used to connect two circuits of different impedances and has a nominal voltage gain of one. It has a high input impedance and a low output impedance and allows us to match impedances for maximum power transfer. I'm using the circuit because it's simple, but it will allow me to hit high points of PCB design. The first thing I'm going to do is to load up KiCad and save a new project. I'm calling this one KiCad Basics 1. We will confirm that we want to create a new directory for this project. Next, I want to open up EE Schema, which is the schematic editor for KiCad. Here I'm going to build my circuit much like LT Spice or other Spice softwares, but without the simulation capabilities. For reference, I'll pull up the circuit I'm working on. The op amp icon at the right hand side contains my components and the ground icon contains power flags. To place a component, you first select the correct icon, then click in the schematic window. You will get a dialog box with all of the possible components and you can search for what you're looking for. I'm going to start with the transistor, so I'll search for that. The particular BJT transistor I'm choosing is 2N3904, which I have on hand in the lab. I can also simulate it in Lieutenant Spice. We can zoom in on this component and add more. I'll point out that, at least on my computer, the zoom can be a little sensitive, so that's a little frustrating. Now I'll add in the rest of my components, but I want to point out some important hotkeys that will speed up the process. We will also use movie magic to speed up the process. The first hotkey is hovering over a component and clicking the M key to move the component. The R key rotates and the C key copies. For this circuit, I want a way to connect power and test leads in, so I'm going to choose one terminal connectors here. If I don't have one terminal connectors in the lab, I can always just solder in wires later. I have to be very careful to make sure I specify the DC power supply VCC, which is 12 volts as well as ground. Once I've placed all of my components, I can wire them together. This is the little green wire icon on the right, or the hotkey W, but the hotkey acts a little goofy. Another feature of this schematic editor is that I can specify the values of each component. They would ideally be screen printed onto my board if I sent this out to a PCB house, but in my case, I just have a PCB mill to work with. So no screen printing for me, boo -hoo. I can right click on the component and choose value and change it. The hotkey for this is to hover over and click V. Once I've done all of this, I want my parts to be annotated. I'll click the little button with an op amp and a question mark on the icon in the top. It's next to the little red devil if you can't find it. Click annotate and OK and we have annotated components. Next, I'll click the button that says net to generate a net list which will associate all of my new annotated components with items in the net list. Then I'll choose the button with an icon that has an op amp and an integrated circuit package to run CVPCB which will let me associate components with physical footprints. Once that opens up, I'll click on the footprint viewer so I can see a graphical representation of each of the footprints I'm selecting. Now I'm going to go through each of the components and assign footprints. For the capacitors, I'm choosing some radial ones that look similar to the ones I have in lab. I could actually go measure the pitch and size if I want to be precise, but I'm okay with hand waving over that. For the connectors, I'm going to choose pin headers that are angled, noting that I could just use a wire if I need to. The only one of these that's going to be a little strange is the transistor footprint. I'm going to choose the molded wide footprint, even though that doesn't really match my transistor packaging, because I know that the PCB mill that I have access to can't make them in line with the bit sizes we have. Once you've assigned all the footprints, close CVPCB and save as you exit. Then regenerate the netlist and then close EE schema and save as you exit. Now we're finally going to do PCB layout. Click on PCB new and open the PCB layout file. Before you do anything else, you might want to change design rules based on your manufacturing capabilities. These design rules define the path and clearance on your board. I'll set mine up for what our mill can do. If you're sending out for your board to be made, check the company's minimum size requirements to set your design rules. With that done, we're going to read in the netlist. This will populate the layout editor with all of your components piled on top of each other. We will use the same hotkeys as before to move, M, and rotate, are these components. You can spread them out fairly evenly. When you spread them out, you will notice that there are white lines connecting different terminals. This is called the rat's nest and it's to let you know, based on your schematic, which terminals are supposed to be connected. You can use this to place components in a logical fashion so paths will be able to make it where they're supposed to go. Okay, solid. Now I'm going to define the outline of my board. I'll do it by clicking the dash blue line on the right and choosing the edge cuts layer. I'll mark out the perimeter. When that's closed, I'll right click and end drawing. Next, I'm going to add a filled zone. I'm going to do this for two reasons. One, I don't want to make my mill cut out more copper than necessary. And two, I have several points which link to ground. Since I'm linking so much to ground, I'm going to make a big filled zone which is all ground. To do this, I'll click on add filled zones and choose the F 
CU or front copper layer or the federal credit union layer. When I click, it lets me choose what layer I want and what net connects to it. In my case, ground, and then I'm free to go. I'll make the zone the whole size of my board. Once I'm done with the outline, I'll right click and close the zone outline. Then I can see that I have little hash marks around the edges of the zone. I'll right click inside the zone and fill refill all zones so I can see that this zone is all copper. Now it's time to add some tracks, connecting my components together. To lay tracks, I'll click the green wire on the right and choose front copper as my layer. Using the rat's nest if it is up, or my memory in the case of this video, I'll connect the circuit together. To start a track, I left click on one pad and then I'll click where I want to put it and then right click and end track at the pad I'm ending at. Since I have the large filled zone for ground, I don't have to run tracks to connect the ground points together. Once I've laid down all my sick tracks, I'll click back on the filled zones and fill refill all zones as before. You'll see the tracks, you'll see the filled zone, you'll see the holes. If you want to see what this might look like physically, once the components are populated, you can click on view, 3D viewer, and that's pretty neat. Okay, that's all done. I want to quickly show you where you can find all the hotkeys. They are under preferences, hotkeys, and you can list or change your current keys. We're going to make use of one of the hotkeys right now to reset our local coordinates. Hovering around the lower left hand corner of my board, I'll click spacebar. You'll see at the bottom it resets my DX and DY to zero. I can use that to measure the size of my board by moving my cursor around. It looks like my board's about 45 millimeters long, about 33 millimeters wide, roughly two by one and a half inches. If you want to, you can definitely set measurements into inches instead of millimeters, but hey, unit conversions. Before I can generate a Gerber file to either send my mill or an external PCB house, I need to do a design rule check to make sure everything is connected correctly. I can do this by clicking Tools, DRC, and then running it. Hooray, no errors. To generate the Gerber files, I'll go to File, Plot. I'll make sure the plot format is Gerber and then select only the layers I need, FCU and edge cuts. Then I'll click plot and the Gerber files are generated. I'll also need to generate a drill file so I get holes where I expect. I'll click generate drill file, then make sure the format is Gerber and then drill file. Let's close out of this, making sure to save any time it prompts us to. Last thing we can do is to actually look at the Gerber file and see what's going to be sent out. Click on Gerb view and load the files you just made. And Viola, we have what we need to make a PCB. Thanks for watching. I'll try to make more videos in the future which drill into more detail on specific things in KiCad, but this should be enough to make you dangerous. Good luck!